Without objection, so ordered. Mr. President, I can still remember the day in June a few years ago, June the 27th, 2013, two and a half years ago, the Senate gathered and voted on comprehensive immigration reform. The vote was 68 to 22. The bill meant a lot to many of us. Eight of us, four Democrats and four Republicans, had literally worked for months trying to craft a bill to address the massive immigration system in America, a system that is terribly broken. And I think it surprised a lot of people that we did it. Democrats and Republicans agreeing on something? There's a headliner. And who sat across the table? Not an easy jury to decide any issue when it came to Senate business. On our side of the table, Chuck Schumer, New York, chair of the Senate Immigration Subcommittee of Judiciary at that point. Myself, Bob Menendez, Hispanic American senator from the state of uh, New Jersey, and Michael Bennett of Colorado, four of us. On the opposite side of the table, John McCain led the effort on the Republican side, along with Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, who uh, had a background in law enforcement in the military and currently running for president. And next to him, Marco Rubio from the state of Florida, Cuban-American, came to this uh, undertaking. He, too, is running for president of the United States. And Jeff Flake of Arizona, a conservative Republican. We worked for months. We went through every provision and came to a bipartisan agreement to move the bill forward. We passed it 68 to 22, and I think it would have been a dramatic improvement over the current laws or lack of laws in America. The House of Representatives refused to call it, wouldn't even bring the matter before its committees, never had a debate on any immigration issue in the two and a half years since. They missed an opportunity, an opportunity to do something important, and a rare opportunity where Democrats and Republicans happen to agree on a solution. That's hard to come by in this place. This bill would have strengthened border security, cracked down on illegal immigration, protected American workers, and established a tough but fair path for 11 million undocumented immigrants in this country who are currently living here, and it gave them a path to legal status. Pay their taxes, pay the fines, go through a criminal background check, and then they were eligible, not before then. Democrats were in the majority in the Senate at that moment, we reached across the aisle to work with Republicans, so the bill was truly bipartisan. Well, it's a shame that the Republican-controlled House of Representatives would not even consider the bill. We asked them, just call the bill. If it's going to be defeated, call it. Nope, not going to consider any immigration reform, and they have not. Well, we're in a new Senate now, a new Senate under control of the other party. And what has been the approach to immigration? Well, unfortunately, little time has been spent trying to find common ground. First, some Senate Republicans threatened to shut down the Department of Homeland Security. This is the department that not only has us take our shoes off the airport, they are literally trying to protect us from another act of terrorism in the United States. For months, the Senate Republicans refused to pass an appropriations bill to fund the Department of Homeland Security until the Democrats would accept anti-immigrant amendments. After we repeatedly reject this approach, they finally relented and passed a clean appropriations bill for this important department for America's security. Now, here we go again. Some Senate Republicans have brought partisan legislation to the floor and understand this, to defund, remove the funding from law enforcement efforts in this country. I don't know what's happening in many places, but I do know what's happening in the Midwest. We've seen violent crime, gun-related crime, go, go up dramatically. 20% increase of gun-related deaths this year in Chicago over the previous year. And in the city of Milwaukee, 100% increase in gun-related crime this year. So why would we even consider a bill before us on the floor of the United States Senate, or by the senator from Louisiana, to reduce funding for law enforcement and police departments? Senator Vetter has offered a bill that would block important police, disaster relief, and other funding 
from communities that do not share immigration information with the federal government or don't hold a detainee at the behest of federal immigration authorities. My Republican colleagues know that this bill has no chance to become law. They've made no effort to engage the Democrats in a bipartisan conversation. It's, it may pass the Senate, but I doubt it. And if it does, the President would veto it. This is done for reasons other than passing a bill and creating a new law. Some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle claim they are responding to the tragic, and yes it was, tragic death of Kate Steinle, a young woman who was allegedly shot and killed by Francisco Sanchez, an undocumented immigrant with a long criminal history. Mr. Sanchez had several drug convictions. He illegally re-entered the United States several times after he was deported. Earlier this year, he finished his third prison sentence for illegal re-entry. The Bureau of Prisons should have turned Mr. Sanchez over to the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Department to be deported. But instead, they sent him to San Francisco to face a 20-year-old marijuana charge. Not surprising, lo local authorities decided not to prosecute this old charge. So sadly, unfortunately, tragically, he was released. This never, ever should have happened. Federal and local authorities must do a better job of communicating and coordinating so that undocumented immigrants with serious criminal records are detained and deported, period. The bill before us doesn't solve the problem, which I've just described. It wouldn't have prevented the tragic death of this young woman. In fact, this legislation would actually make us less safe. By threatening communities with the loss of millions of dollars in critical federal funding for local law enforcement, as well as discouraging immigrants from cooperating with local police. The Chicago Tribune, not known as any liberal publication, published an editorial opposing the bill that's coming before us. And they said, threatening to take money away from police, local police, is a soundbite, not a solution. Republican Congressman Bob Dole, my home state of Illinois, was one of five Republicans who voted against the House version of the bill. And he said, cutting funding for local law enforcement would not have prevented this horrible crime. What would the consequences be of passing the Vitter bill that is pending before the Senate? At risk are tens of millions of dollars in funding from pro many programs. The State Criminal Alien Assistance Program, also known as SCAP, helps cover the cost for states and localities to detain undocumented immigrants with serious criminal records. The burn grants, which we all know about serving in the Senate because our local police departments benefit from them, the most important and largest grant program to support crime fighting efforts of our local police departments. And the community development block grants provide critical funding for local communities for disaster relief and other priorities. Let me give you some examples from Illinois of the impact of the Vitter Bill. In fiscal year 2014, Cook County, our largest county, received 1,381,000 in SCAP funding, 7 million plus in burn JAG funding. In fiscal year 2015, Chicago received $72 million in CDBG funding. The Fraternal Order of Police sent a letter opposing the Vitter Bill, which is before the Senate, on behalf of the 330,000 police members who belong to that fraternity. Here's what it said. It is wrong and gross unfairness to punish these brave men and women or the citizens they serve because Congress disagrees with their enforcement priorities with respect to our nation's immigration laws. This bill is supposedly an effort to punish so-called sanctuary cities, including some in my own home state, that have policies limiting dealings between federal immigration authorities and local law enforcement. But the goal of these policies is to promote effective community policing by encouraging immigrant communities to trust local police. Many of these policies were established in response to secure communities, a program created by the Bush administration, a program which badly damaged the relationship between immigrant communities and local law enforcement around the country. The Illinois State Police signed a memorandum of agreement with immigration authorities to participate in secure communities. The agreement said the goal of the program was to, quote, identify, detain, and remove from the United States aliens who have been convicted of serious criminal offenses, end of quote. However, it turned out 
More than 30% of those deported from Illinois under the program had no criminal record. Less than 20% had been convicted of a serious crime. Illinois law enforcement officials say that the program eroded trust in law enforcement in the Hispanic community. Their conclusion is backed up by polling data. A 2013 University of Illinois study found that 44% of Latinos report being less likely to contact the police if they are a victim of crime out of fear that the police will inquire about immigration status. The Vitter Bill makes this even worse, forcing local law enforcement to become enforcers of immigration laws. I received a letter opposing the Vitter Bill from the Law Enforcement Immigration Task Force, a group of more than 30 law enforcement officials, including Republican Lake County Sheriff Mark Curran, a local law enforcement official from my home state that I've worked with in the past. These officials are very concerned that this bill will make our communities less safe by discouraging immigrants from cooperating with law enforcement. Here's what the local law enforcement in Illinois said. When state and local law enforcement agencies are required to enforce federal immigration laws, undocumented residents may fear that they, or people they know or depend upon, risk deportation by working with law enforcement. This fear undermines trust between law enforcement and the communities we serve creating too much room for dangerous criminals and violent crime. The Vitter Bill also dramatically increases penalties for illegal entry, including two new mandatory minimum criminal sentences. Estimates are that these new penalties created by the Vitter Bill would require approximately 18,600 new prison beds and up to 12 new federal prisons. New federal prisons cost several hundred million dollars to construct tens of millions of dollars to operate. In some, these new mandatory minimums will cost taxpayers billions of dollars. There is no suggestion in this bill of how we would pay for that. The real solution to this problem is smart and targeted immigration enforcement that encourages cooperation with local law enforcement. The Homeland Security Department only has enough funding to deport a small fraction of the undocumented immigrants in our country. President Obama has wisely said that we should focus on those who could do us harm. In fact, 85% of those deported from the interior of our country in fiscal year 2014 had a criminal conviction, and they should have been deported, compared to only 38% in 2008 under the previous president. This president's policies focus our limited resources on deporting dangerous people, deporting felons, not families, criminals, not children. As part of the effort to target immigration enforcement, Secretary of Homeland Security Jay Johnson has established the Priority Enforcement Program, also known as PEP, to replace secure communities. PEP is designed to protect our safety while improving trust between local police and communities they serve. The program enables DHS to work with state and local law enforcement to take custody of individuals who pose a danger to public safety before they're released. PEP has only been operational for a short time. We need to give it a chance to work before we rush in to pass this legislation, which could only make the problem worse. The best way to fix our broken immigration system, incidentally, and make our community safer is to pass comprehensive immigration reform once and for all. The bill the Senate passed in 2013 would have made unprecedented investments in border security, would have cracked down on employers who hire undocumented immigrants, and ramped up interior enforcement of immigration laws. The bill would have invested $46 billion in new resources in border security. No fewer than 38,000 U.S. Border Patrol agents along the southern border. Enhanced penalties for increased immigration violations with sentences of up to 20 years for those with criminal histories. And increased penalties for passport and immigration document trafficking and fraud. Most important, this bill would bring millions of people out of the shadows and require them to prove their identity, pass a criminal background check, pay all fines and taxes. This would allow immigration enforcement to focus on the people who are truly a public safety threat. So instead of this Senate taking up a bipartisan bill for true immigration reform, we have this bill, a bill not likely to go much further than this procedural motion, which we'll face tomorrow. This bill would not have print the bill on the floor would not have prevented Kate Steinle's tragic death. Here's the reality. The vast majority of immigrants are hardworking, law-abiding individuals with strong family values. 
I work with them, I know them, and I trust them. And I believe they have an important role to play when it comes to this country's future. Many studies have shown that immigrants are less likely to commit serious crimes than native-born individuals. This bill, unfortunately, focuses on the violent acts of a few to scapegoat an entire community. This is dangerous and irresponsible. This bill continues down a dangerous path by promoting the myths that immigrants pose a threat to our nation's safety. I urge my colleagues to reject this legislation, and I yield the floor.